Hey guys, um, Chris here again, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to field strip, clean, lubricate, and put the gun back together. So let's start with the field strip of the gun. First, we remove the magazine, put it to the side, and then one um, kind of unique feature with this gun is that it uh, it field strips exactly like the real steel. Well, not exactly, but um, like the real steel with the recoil spring plug. Uh, normally, on airsoft uh, guns, there's a rim on the back side here of the recoil spring uh, that actually holds it in on the back side, uh, so it can't slide out the front. However, on the real ones and on this one. Uh, the only thing keeping the recoil uh, spring plug in is the barrel bushing. So what you do next is to uh, remove the tension from the recoil spring and the slide to make the disassembly easier. Uh, you remove the recoil spring plug first. Obviously on a real gun where they have like 19 to I um, think 24 pound springs is going to help significantly more than on this one. I think this spring is, a, is around five pounds, maybe less. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'm just guessing there, but I, I bought a seven pound and a nine pound real steel spring. And uh, so it's just a guess, but anyway, push down. You can use the bushing tool to, to do this, but I don't since there's not that much tension on, on the spring. So push down on the plug, rotate the bushing to the, uh, let's see, left-hand side of the gun. We'll release the uh, plug and remove it. Remove the spring and the bushing. So now you can work uh, with the rest of the disassembly without fighting the tension of the gun. So now we cock the hammer, pull the slide back, line up the uh, first notch in the slide with the slide catch. And then we push down uh, or push out to the other side on this bump right there of the uh, slide catch to make it come out. So it can be a little tricky. If it's sticking, you're probably not aligning it correctly, so it should come out fairly easy. Uh, next, pull the slide off of the frame, and then remove the recoil spring guide rod, like so. Uh, I have a um, Airsoft Surgeon recoil buffer on here. That's not a, an original part, so you probably won't have that on, your, on yours. Uh, once all those parts are taken apart and put aside, you can remove the actual outer barrel from the slide by pushing it out the front. So that's it for the um, disassembly. That's, uh, I'm not going to um, disassemble the entire frame. That's not included in, in the field strip, obviously. So we're gonna keep it at this and um, now I'm going to show you how to clean and lubricate the gun and, and these parts that we've taken apart here. Um, so let's focus on on the slide first. So I'm just going to put some parts aside here that we don't need. Uh, actually, we can keep that just to uh, show you what what you can do with the um, recoil spring guide rod. If you want, you can take a little bit of silicone oil on your fingers and just rub it down just to, to make the spring go back and forth a little bit smoother. Uh, obviously, being polished stainless steel, there's not a lot of friction on there, so that's up to you how, how you want to do it. I, I do that sometimes just to help, uh, help the gun cycle as smoothly as possible. Um, anyway, back to the actual slide. Uh, the important parts to consider here are the um, slide rails on the inside here, the cutouts which uh, interlock onto the frame 
um, to um, to make sure that the slide is uh, aligned when it's traveling back and forth on on the frame, and also the nozzle here, both internally and externally, you need to lubricate that a little bit. So there's not a whole lot in here to consider, but before we get to lubricating, I'm going to clean it because. Since it's um, aluminum parts rubbing up against steel, you know, there's going to be paint um, coming off and some aluminum dust and particles uh, coming off. So what I use to clean my guns is a uh, microfiber cloth. I have a couple of those. Uh, I use some for cleaning the gun and some for just wiping off smudges and etc. So I suggest you you keep two separate microfiber cloths for that so you don't mix them up. Uh, it could cause scratches and marks on your finish if you're not careful. So basically just put your finger inside of the cloth and try to wipe down uh, the rails best you can. And as you can see there's a little bit of dirt. I cleaned it not too long ago so it's not going to be too bad. But just run it back and forth a little bit like that. And uh, I'm not going to do it super thorough here just because of the time. Uh, so you can all also um, go in there and clean it a little bit deeper with uh, Q tips if you want. Uh, so let's do the other side here, like so. And then. Um, like I mentioned in one of my other videos here, because the blowback unit is, uh, I'm sorry, blowback housing is aluminum, it's rubbing up against the steel parts, and so there's kind of a, a lot being rubbed off there. And you, you don't want to get metal dust and uh, dirt inside of your nozzle, so try to keep that as clean as possible. Uh, as you can tell from the cloth here, we got a lot of a lot of uh, dirt on there. So I'm just gonna do, rub that down, pull the nozzle forward, and rub the inside as well. So there you go. That should be fairly clean by now. And now we're going to reapply some silicone oil to lubricate it. And what I use is a uh, race car shock absorber silicone oil and these are made by uh, Kyosho I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly and these come in a variety of viscosities or thicknesses um, I bought uh, a couple of these uh, different um, viscosities and I have 100 which is the lightest it's I guess like regular uh, vegetable oil, oil a little bit thinner maybe and then we have uh, the 200 and I think I also have 350 and 500. So the 100 is really good for, for example, the nozzle here, you know, things that need to have as little friction as possible. Uh, the 200 oil I use for mainly for, uh, you know, the magazine valves and uh, gas route uh, rubbers etc basically any surfeit that needs lubrication uh, to make good contact and not dry out uh, you could also use them on the slide rails since the 100 oil is so thin uh, it rubs off fairly quickly in there so I usually uh, put the 200 oil in there um, so let's put some oil in. Um, I have a tendency to over lubricate things which is not always a good thing because you don't want to get too much silicone inside of the nozzle which will then travel out into the barrel and your hopper rubber and making your gun basically inaccurate because of uh, the hopper being affected by the lubricants. Um, so what you probably should do is put some of the silicone oil on a q-tip and then just lightly rub it on. I just put on a drop or two 
on the inside and then rub it uh, out with my fingers um, like so and uh, what you can also do is try to get a drop uh, here on the top side of the nozzle and then just pull that back and forth I don't know if you can tell or hear but it's definitely running very smoothly right now so I'm happy with that um, next up are the guide rounds and what I do is I take the 200 oil put uh, let's see I'm gonna have to do this at an odd angle but mm, that fell into the slide which I do not want sorry uh, I'm gonna do this off camera just to get it right here uh, one two okay so I just put two drops in one right there and one there and then I just run a q-tip down the rails to uh, distribute it evenly inside and uh, you don't really need a whole lot in there we're gonna uh, do the majority of the lubrication for this on the frame which we're gonna take a look at next so let's see Whoop. And hoop, and then the Q tip. And as you can see, there's still a little bit of uh, dirt in there. Not too bad. So, like I said, uh, I'm not going to do a, a thorough cleaning. So, now we can reassemble the slide. And uh, I'm going to actually let's not do that i'm going to do the reassembly uh, separate for you uh, after the cleaning and lubrication so okay next up we have the frame and there are a lot more moving parts and parts that are interacting with each other and the the slide so a couple of things to consider here uh, i'm not going to show you uh this uh, in detail in this video but what you can do for the uh, low friction uh, parts that are not actually moving and interacting a lot such as the magazine release the thumb safety and grip safety and, and uh, the hammer uh, pins etc you could use the 350 oil or 500 oil and just put a little bit on there to uh, remove some of the friction and make them run smoother. Um, I also like to put a little bit of oil on the outside of the the trigger bow so it runs smoothly inside of, of the gun. So uh, I'm not going to show you that in this video but um, just keep that in mind if you want to do it uh, properly. Uh, so let's see let me let's get my jamming rod here so you can take a look so what we have here are basically uh, that we need to focus on is the disconnector that needs to be able to move up and down freely uh, with as little friction as possible to make sure the action is smooth we also have the valve uh, reset knocker on there same thing for that it needs to be able to move up and down and I also like to put a little bit of silicone oil uh, here on the hammer uh, action as well to make sure that that's rotating properly and then finally we have the the other half of the guide rails for the slide and uh, it's uh, easier to lubricate this part uh, instead of the slide but I'll, I like to put some in the slide as well just just uh, to keep everything smooth so let's start off with the microfiber cloth and clean this off and while you're at it, you could obviously clean some of the the uh, frame as well. So let's just do a quick rundown. I'm not, I don't think this is too bad, actually. Uh, yep, let's leave it at that. And also, again, you could run Q-tips here in the uh, grooves of the rails. So uh, for the lower frame, I prefer using only the 200 oil so what I do is keeping in the frame at a bit of an angle down and forward just put one drop on the uh, disconnector 
push it up and down a little bit to make sure the oil is distributed evenly inside. Uh, and then same thing with the valve reset knocker, one drop. You just try to work it in there as best as you can. And um, like I said, one drop on the hammer. You can rub that out to distribute it with the uh, Q-tip. Excuse me, I'm getting a little bit tired here. It's uh, in the middle of the night here when I'm recording this video. So, And then finally, we're going to put some oil onto the rails. And here it's important to lubricate both the, the top side and the uh, edges of the slide, uh, or as our uh, guide rails. So one drop there, one drop there, one there. Let's do two there, and then uh, with a Q-tip, just even it out so that you don't get a lot of excess uh, oil dripping all over. And then I like to put one, two drops, and then again with the Q-tip. Just distribute it like so. Let's see if I can get a good. Oh, damn, I got it on the frame. So that's exactly what you don't want. You don't want to get silicone oil dripping over your frame because it might stain or, you know, um, well, it's not going to stain, but it's going to affect the finish of your. Um, your gun. So now that we have the gun cleaned and lubricated, let's do the reassembly. Um, not really that difficult. It's basically the disassembly in reverse. Surprise, surprise. So Obviously, we don't have to do anything with the frame. That's separate, so I'm going to put that to the side for now. And with the slide, we put the barrel in. Recoil spring guide rod in. And again, you probably don't have the, the buffer kit, uh, although I highly recommend that you do get it because of the heavy slide and the forces that uh, that brings onto the gun. So at this stage, we're ready to mount the slide to the frame. So making sure that the hammer is cocked, uh, push down on the two uh, action tabs there, the disconnector and the valve reset knocker, just to make sure uh, they're not going to get stuck. Uh, make sure that the recoil spring guide rod is in the rear position just so it doesn't uh, fall off or get jammed up against something and then you simply uh, there we go put the slide on and when you get to the disconnector and valve reset knocker don't force it in gently push down with your fingernail and then it should slide right on top uh, and at that point you can Continue rearwards and align the slide notch with the hole in the frame. And then very carefully insert the slide catch into the slide catch hole in the frame. And then making sure that you don't scratch your slide or frame, align it and push it in. And it should lock in place fairly easily. Then you push the slide forward. Uh, I like to drop the hammer just so that doesn't get, um, just to keep the slide in the, in the uh, forward position. And now I like to put on the barrel bushing first to the, uh, let's see, left hand side. Spring goes in and then um, this one's actually fairly similar in both them, but most springs uh, have one side where the end of the coil uh, it kind of it's not like double stacked kind of like you you see there uh, so the end with the least the fuck just happened 
Uh, sorry about that. For some reason, the video decided to stop recording. So, as I was saying, the end with the least amount of tightly wrapped coils, uh, you want to put that outwards into the recoil spring plug. So, push the recoil spring in, put the plug on top, push it in, and at this point, you need to make sure that the slide stays fully forward otherwise you're not going to be able to get the parts together and then just rotate the bushing into place wrap the slide a couple of times to make sure it's working properly uh, i'm having a little bit of issues with the sticky nozzle i have to look into that so um, hopefully you guys don't um, i think it just needs to be aligned a little bit so you see, drop the hammer, put the magazine back in, and you're done. Hope you guys enjoyed and um, found this video informative, and thanks for watching.